Hey CAC team, welcome to our first flipped classroom. If you remember, a flipped classroom is where the learning takes place outside of the class. Then the learners, that's you, have a chance to process their learning or apply their learning during classroom time. Of course, we are substituting classroom time for CAC meeting time. I hope you enjoy this video on the pool. To start, let's share a little background about the pool at the high school. The pool was built as a part of the original construction of the high school in 1968 and 1969. It is 45 years old. It is an indoor pool located adjacent to the Performing Arts Center and the North Gym. Or another way to look at it is that it is the large space between the North and South Gyms. The pool has six lanes and includes a deck area of approximately six to eight feet all the way around the pool. There are starting blocks located at the east end of the pool, as seen in this picture. There is also a spectator seating area located in a balcony. Currently, the pool has five main uses, physical education classes, swim teams, lap swim, open swim, and summer swim lessons. The pool is managed by a school district staff member. This is in addition to her full-time teaching duties and part-time job as a girls swim team coach. As we have looked at each of our sites, the pool has not had a night of its own for discussion by the CAC as learning environments, finances, student population growth, and elementary space needs has seemed to take precedence. The district-wide survey taking place in December shares some of our challenges that the pool is currently having and we will test the waters on community interest in working on the pool. The original 1969 design of DeForest Area High School is shown on this slide. The red arrows indicate the original exterior entrances. This allowed for community access to the pool directly from the exterior of the building. At the time, this community access met the needs of both the high school and the community. The main doors were located on the far west side of the pool, or right side of the map. Many of the programs that use the pool today did not exist at this time in 1969. In other words, when originally constructed, the community had limited needs with maximal access. Let's fast forward 45 years. There has been significant community growth with increased needs of both the high school and the community. Swim teams have formed for both the high school and through private organizations. The demand for community swim lessons has increased. The use of the pool for athletes and physical education classes has increased. And there have been multiple structural additions to DeForest Area High School. These additions were made to meet the growing needs of our schools for both educational programming and to address increased enrollment. However, the additions did limit the access to the pool facility to the outside community, especially during school hours. Getting community members inside and offering them an appropriate place to change, as well as having a lifeguard on duty, are not challenges we are able to meet in the current design. At issue is how to best accommodate the high school and community needs. The hours of pool availability are limited not only by the location of the entrances and being in the interior of the building, but also limited when events are scheduled in the same area, such as the pool and the south and north gyms. In addition to the community access and hours of operational challenges, there are structural and mechanical challenges with the 45-year-old pool. The pool needs the tile repaired and the entire pool grouted. This would require draining the pool, downtime while the repairs are completed and dry fully, and refilling the pool. This is an enormous cost in downtime, repairs, water, and chemicals. Additionally, the southwest corner of the pool has settled a little. This causes the northeast corner gutter to not skim water. Upgrades to the mechanical structures have been made during the last 45 years. 
For example, the original filter was replaced in 2009 with a new sand filter and pump. A new heater, tied to the building heating system, was installed last year. This often happens in addition to high school remodeling projects. However, it is fair to say that these mechanical structures are not state-of-the-art. Rather, they keep the pool operational. The pool area itself has significant limitations. Currently, there is no handicap accessibility in the locker rooms adjacent to the pool deck. While there is a lift for community members once they are in the pool area, as well as a hand shower and benches available in the locker rooms, these would not meet current ADA codes if constructed today. Storage areas for pool equipment, including lane lines, timing systems, and other lifeguarding equipment, are difficult to access due to the existing layout of the lockers and entryways. These spaces were not originally intended to be used for storage and make accessing equipment very challenging. Space on both the pool deck and spectator balcony is limited. Small numbers of participants can be on the deck and moving around one another safely in the six to eight foot deck area surrounding the pool. Spectators in the balcony experience obstructed views and when seated are limited to viewing only five of the six lanes. Additional spectators are accommodated in folding chairs in the hallway looking through the glass windows. Finally, the size of the pool limits our ability to host postseason competitions. The DAHS team is also not able to host a diving event as regulations for diving wells are currently 12 feet and our pool is at 10 feet. Modern pools are typically eight lanes with a large pool deck to accommodate swim meet officials and competitors. The deck is used for timers and other officials as well as offering competitors a wider area around the pool to move about safely. The pool could have a diving well that meets modern safety requirements. Safety and security of our property is also important. Properly locked and managed locker rooms go a long way toward good security. There is a lot of foot traffic by high school students moving through the locker rooms each day and at all hours of the day. This makes safety and security a challenge. If community access is expanded, it would be important to discuss separate changing areas for the public and high school students. Giving a young mom with small children a place to change separate from a high school student or class may be an important consideration. Our challenge is how to create accessible and comfortable facilities for all of our users. Finally, with expanded use comes more equipment and supplies, therefore storage is an ongoing issue. So what would it cost to rectify these issues? Whether in partnership with the village, businesses, the townships, or others, there is a cost. At this point, it is estimated to be around $10 million. This would include building a new pool, converting the old pool space to an additional physical education or other space, creating a separate entrance, and modifying the parking lot as needed. No planning has been done for this. We can estimate this cost from other pool builds in the recent past and those being estimated right now in other communities, as well as using an estimate of square footage costs. Additionally, it is important to know that this cost estimate does not include the operational costs of a pool on a year-over-year -year basis.